We are glad to have you with us for our program, Dr. Stephen Gorad, vegan, on quinoa, super grain of the future, part two of three. For those people, the quinoa, it was sacred, it was important. In their language, they called it la chisia mama, la chisia mama, and that means mother grain. Part program reveals Dr. Stephen Gorad's journey of discovering and introducing quinoa to the world. He has written a book about his adventures called The Quinoa Chronicles to document his many years of involvement in promoting this superfood. The book History of Tofu and Tofu Products states the two men most responsible for creating a quinoa market in the USA are Stephen Gorad and Don McKinley. Dr. Gorad, a vegan, attended school in the USA, starting with the Bronx High School of Science and then studying at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He ultimately earned a PhD from Boston University and became a clinical psychologist. He did not feel fulfilled by this career path and thus decided to pursue spiritual practice. As part of his spiritual journey, he traveled to the South American Andes and found out about quinoa. He was so impressed with this crop that he felt a calling to make quinoa a food that can be enjoyed by people everywhere and has spent over four decades on this mission. I brought quinoa back. My, my, my best friend, Don McKinley, and I started a company, Quinoa Corporation, in 1983. And we started the very long, slow process of making quinoa available for people in the United States. And also we, were, we started selling to uh, Europe. The real home of quinoa is the Altiplano of Bolivia and Peru. Altiplano, it means high plain. And uh, the Altiplano is like 13, 14,000 feet high. It's really a staple grain like rice and wheat, and it will be that, and it will be more important in the future because as climate changes, agricultural practices are going to change also. And quinoa has several advantages. Quinoa is drought resistant, it's frost resistant, and it's salt tolerant. So, for example, drought resistant. The Altiplano, uh, this flat plain, it's above tree line. There's no trees. You look, you put your hand in the dirt. It's not dirt. It's sand. It's dried dirt. Nothing else grows up there. Quinoa grows. Not only does it grow, it grows well. And uh, rainfall, forget about it. The Altiplano is like a very high desert and quinoa grows there. I think quinoa is a miracle. It's a miracle food in that it's a mother grain. It's got a perfect protein coming from a plant that doesn't exist anywhere else. Quinoa is called a superfood for its many beneficial nutritional properties. It is a complete protein, meaning it contains all nine essential amino acids. A 2017 study published in the Journal of Nutraceuticals and Food Science concluded that quinoa has higher protein content and a more optimum balance of amino acids than cereals like wheat, corn, rice, barley, oats and rye. Additionally, it has two times the fiber of other grains. Consuming fiber helps keep one's cholesterol levels low and promotes good digestion. This super grain is high in iron, 
an essential mineral that makes up hemoglobin that is found in oxygen-carrying red blood cells. Quinoa is also rich in riboflavin or vitamin B2 that aids with metabolism in brain and muscle cells. There are several thousand types of quinoa and the seeds can appear in a variety of colors including white, red, black, purple, yellow and orange. Interestingly, quinoa is classified as a pseudo cereal, a term that means it is a food that is prepared and consumed like grain and even has a nutritional composition that is close to grains. However, the plant is related to beets, chard and spinach. We will now pause briefly for a constructive message. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Dr. Stephen Gorat Vegan on Quinoa, Super Grain of the Future, Part 2 of 3 on Supreme Master Television. Dr. Gorat has studied Quinoa extensively and is always eager to share fascinating facts about the mother grain. Let me say something about the vitality of uh, quinoa. So I think people eat alfalfa sprouts, sunflower sprouts, buckwheat sprouts. They're sprouts you buy in the store. They're refrigerated because you don't want them to continue growing. So I grew quinoa sprouts. I grew quinoa sprouts, and then I said, oh, okay, the, the sprout is long enough. Put it in the refrigerator. Guess what? Well, kept growing. <laughs> <laughs> Cold doesn't bother it. It just keeps growing. You want to sprout a, a kernel of wheat, put it in a glass of water. In 12 hours, it'll start growing. Okay? You put quinoa in a glass of water, four hours, and it starts growing. Mm. So it's like the quinoa grain is like bursting with energy to like grow. That's the energy that we're taking into our bodies when we're eating quinoa. One of the old scientists that uh, uh, wrote about quinoa in the old days commented that none of this science stuff about how great quinoa is would interest an indigenous person in Bolivia at all. He doesn't need the science to tell him that quinoa is the perfect food to sustain his life. Because under those harsh conditions, he is surviving and thriving and doing the things he has to do. The Inca, for example, they didn't use horses or carts or cars or they walked. So they walked in the mountains to communicate from one community to another. And hey, quinoa. It's like quinoa gave them the gave them all the strength that they needed to to do things like walk long distances in the mountains. They they knew instinctively how strong quinoa is. And we kind of like we want to look at the science and look at nutrients and stuff. plant that has miracle properties. We heard earlier from Dr. Gorat that it has no issue with surviving in tough environments. He went into detail regarding quinoa's ability to grow in salty soil. Quinoa doesn't die in the frost. It's drought tolerant. It's frost tolerant. The third thing is perhaps even more important. It's salt tolerant. The thing is, there are vast parts of the planet that can't grow anything because the soil 
and it's usually sandy soil, is salty. Salt tolerance is a rare characteristic. Only certain plants are salt tolerant. I don't think there are any other food crops that are salt tolerant, but quinoa is. So let's go back to the Altiplano, where quinoa originally comes from. In the southern part of the Altiplano, in Bolivia, there's a place called the Salar de Uyuni. It's a dried up lake, and it's just salt. Further south, along the borders of the salt flat, is an area where they grow quinoa, and the soil is full of salt. This is also the place where the South Americans say the best quinoa. In Spanish, it's quinoa real, royal quinoa. So it's the biggest, whitest grain. So far, nobody uh, has been able to grow that size of quinoa. It's just these indigenous communities in the south of the Salar de Uyuni uh, producing this really, really fine quinoa. By the way, high plain, high altitude, what, what does that mean? means uh, thin air. Yes. So what does that mean? It means that there isn't as much oxygen in the air. Like I said, no trees, no other plants, not enough oxygen, not enough nourishment in the soil. My point is, this is a very hostile, harsh environment for animals, humans, and plants. Quinoa grows there. Quinoa survives there. They're growing and then putting their energy into the next generation. So the plant's vital energy goes into its seed. In this case, the seed of the quinoa plant is the quinoa that we eat. Please join us again on Saturday, March 28th, for the third and final part of Dr. Stephen Gorat Vegan on quinoa, super grain of the future featuring more interesting insights from Dr. Gorad on this staple crop. For more information about Dr. Stephen Gorad and his book, The Quinoa Chronicles, please visit quinoachronicles.com or facebook.com forward slash The Quinoa Chronicles. The book is available at amazon.com.